Welcome to the New Brunswick Debrief, where we cover stories from across the province situated on the stolen territory of the Mi'kmaq, Peskutumu, Kadi, and Wulistigwe. My name is Tobin Haley, and I am your host. And this show was filmed in a small studio with a crew of two due to Omicron. Guests are coming in virtually. In this show, we are covering the Safer Communities and Neighborhoods Act, also called the SCAN Act. First passed in 2009, the SCAN Act allows the government to evict people without going through the Residential Tendencies Tribunal or following the Residential Tendencies Act. Instead, evictions happen based on complaints by neighbors and something called a SCAN unit made up of government investigators who can get court orders through a secretive process. Already a controversial act, the government has proposed new amendments that would make making these complaints anonymous while making it easier for a judge to issue an order. I'm looking for data, I'm looking for facts. And if you want to be a shill for organized crime, have at it. This is good legislation. It is good for the safety of New Brunswickers. And I 100% support it. And if you want to delay it, don't vote for it. Fine with me. Uh, we'll let her stand and fall any way you want. Joining us first is Addie Rao a lawyer and human rights representative for QP. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Before we jump into your analysis of, of the SCAN Act and the amendments, can you just quickly explain to viewers what the SCAN Act is? What this act really is, is a, is a, 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 a glorified snitch line uh, for neighbors to, uh, to, to call uh, the government uh, on uh, other neighbors that they're suspicious of uh, of doing things that they don't like. Uh, and, and it exists not just in New Brunswick, um, but across the country. Uh, it first started in Manitoba uh, in, in uh, the, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, amid the mass sort of, um, you know, uh, um, uh, concern about, about drug use uh, that was so prevalent in, in public discourse at the time. Uh, and it continues uh, to this day uh, in, in, in the form of the SCAN Act in, 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 in pretty much every province except uh, PEI, uh, Ontario, uh, and BC. And it's worth noting that that uh, British Columbia uh, actually has the act on, on uh, their books. Uh, it's been passed, but it's never been called, it's never been br brought in force uh, because of concerns raised by groups that this act is possibly unconstitutional and certainly uh, disproportionately going to harm uh, communities uh, across the, the, the province. So in BC, it's just it's just sitting in the pipeline, having never been been given royal assent. So it's never it's been never brought into force. Yeah, it's been it's even received royal assent. It's just never it's just never been proclaimed into in the, oh. in the force. Yeah, so it's it's just sitting there, uh, ready to be ready to be brought into force by cabinet whenever cabinet decides. But cabinet for for successive governments now has never called it into force, and so uh, this and, and and for this reason that mm. that they know that that this act has uh, uh, a, a disproportionately harmful impact on vulnerable communities. And so what are communities doing in response to all of these scan or scan style acts across the country? Well, the part of the problem is that the people that th these acts affect uh, are people who tend not to have the resources to, to fight back. Uh, and so uh, for, for years, these acts across the country have been operating, uh, disproportionately impacting people who are poor, people who are racialized. Um, and, and, and you can imagine why, you know, we know that racism is a problem in our country. It's not a far-fetched idea to, to think of, of, uh, of somebody uh, looking at a, at, a, uh, at, a, at a person of color and thinking that they're up to something nefarious. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that, that all people of color in this country live every day. The police themselves, uh, for example, uh, are guilty of, of racially profiling people of color and, and, and randomly stopping people for no reason, simply because they look quote unquote suspicious. And really all that means is that their color of their skin is different from what maybe the police would like it to be. Uh, but what we have, uh, what we are seeing across the country uh, uh, over the course of the last uh, several years, a uh, couple decades now of, of this, this, this legislation being enforced is data that shows 
uh, that all all these legislation all that this legislation will do um, is result in 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 the violation of the right to housing of of the people that live in in um, in in these properties that are affected. Uh, it 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 uh, uh, we know that for example uh, in uh, uh, in in Brunswick alone, like you know, there's no there's no criminal charges laid. Uh, the, the the you know the minister talks about. Um, the ministers talked about uh, this all being about going after quote unquote criminals, but really this is this is really criminalization of poverty that we're talking about here. Um, in, in, in the Yukon, though, uh, there is a charter challenge being launched uh, against the SCAN Act in that territory. Uh, and so uh, that uh, will be very interesting to see uh, what the decision is uh, out of um, and, and, and that'll have far reaching consequences, no doubt, for, for the pieces of legislation that exist in other parts of the country. Yeah, I'd like to um, circle back to this conversation about housing. Now, um, you know, we've seen stories about evictions as a result of scan warnings in, let's say, Edmondston, right? There was a story about a gentleman in Edmondston who was evicted because a scan unit uh, issued either him or his landlady a warning. Um, are we are we concerned that uh, scan legislation is going to exacerbate the rental crisis that uh, tenants are are surviving in New Brunswick? Yes, and this is this is absolutely the problem with this legislation is that it can it it circumvents entirely protections that already exist for the problems that the government claims that it wants to solve with this legislation. Uh, it, what they're talking about is targeting illegal quote unquote illegal activities and quote unquote criminal activities. Mm -hmm. uh, but we already have the criminal law to go after criminal activities, uh, and we already have the Residential Tenancies Act uh, for all its faults. Uh, to to target uh, illegal activities that take place in in rental properties, so we know that the the act already prohibits uh, the use of rental properties for illegal activities. So the scan the scan legislation right off the bat is completely unnecessary. Uh, and what we're seeing, uh, like the example that you just you just raised, uh, Tobin, is is that the act uh, is being used in a way uh, that it results in the violation of the right to housing for for folks. Um, and and uh, in a province like New Brunswick, where tenants already have some of the weakest protections than, as compared to tenants anywhere else in the country, uh, this is a massive problem and, and something that we should all be concerned about. Because mm -hmm. it's circumventing what little protections are available to tenants through the, through the Residential Tenancies Act. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's clear that all New Brunswickers want safer neighborhoods and communities. But the SCAN legislation is not what's going to get us there. What would you like to see? What do you think that uh, we need in this province in order to achieve those safer neighborhoods and communities? That's you know that's a great question. Uh, we what, what we really need to see is is investments in in communities, uh, not not criminalization of of members of our community. Uh, what we need to see uh, is is a focus on on things that we know uh, that will build vibrant communities. Uh, things, you know, we need better access to, to, to uh, health care, to, to mental health care, to community supports, to affordable housing. Uh, we don't, what we don't need is, is a glorified snitch line uh, that results in, in, in people losing their homes, predominantly people already living in poverty uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and often racialized people who are victims of, of, of racism. Uh, uh, who um, uh, are uh, are being targeted by this? And I must I must point out that our province doesn't collect disag disaggregated data, so so we actually can't even know uh, what the the racialized impact of this in our province is. But we do know uh, from experiences in other provinces, from publicly reported stories in other provinces, uh, that the impact is racialized and that it's disproportionately criminalizing people in poverty. So we know that this is a fact from other places. Uh, and, and, and in New Brunswick, uh, we appear content uh, to, use, uh, to use this extremely discriminatory and harmful tool, uh, despite having absolutely no evidence to support needing it. And I think we'll end there with that strong point. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me on. Joining us is MLA Arsenault, member of the Green Party and elected representative for Kent North. Thank you so much for being here on The Debrief today, MLA Arsenault. With pleasure.
Um, I wanted to talk to you about the scan. You know, you are the critic for um, public safety and justice, correct? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I wanted to talk to you about uh, where we're at with the scan amendment. So could you provide viewers with just a little overview of, uh, you know, how we got here and and where we're at with these three amendments? Yes, well, SCAN is uh, the Safer uh, Community uh, Act and Safer um, and Neighborhoods. So um, the SCAN Act was enacted uh, many years ago, but then the government brought forth amendments, uh, three amendments to be, uh, to be precise. And um, these amendments have went through first reading, second reading, and have just passed uh, co the committee stage. And after committee stage, um, even though I opposed them in committee stage, um, majority wins. And so I was the only uh, person that voted against. So then they're sent back to the legislator in th third reading, and um, they should uh, if, if, if we look at the, the voting record, uh, they should pass sometime in, in March or April. Yes, we are, uh, unless something extraordinary happens, going to be living with, with, uh, with these amendments. Absolutely. So the amendments, um, there, there's two that are that, that do worry me. Um, there's, a, well, the first one that really um, allows um, it's made to make sure that people could stay anonymous uh, while bringing in a complaint and, and reinforces that anonymity. Uh, but we, we've seen that, um, you know, there's serious consequences with uh, that kind of, of way of uh, he, he said, she said, our, our um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, neighborhood, uh, our community members taking justice in, into their own hands. We could just think about um, the, uh, the, the sad incident with Michel Vienno uh, up north. Um, a few years ago, um, the police had received an anonymous tip that he was coming back from Montreal um, with, some, uh, with some illicit drugs. And uh, Monsieur Vienno was uh, shot at the uh, and killed at the uh, train station in Bathurst, New Brunswick, but had never um, been found guilty of nothing, and and no illicit drugs were found uh, with uh, Monsieur Vienno. And so there there are serious consequences uh, to those kind of uh, those kind of amendments. And then the second amendment um, that uh, I I find is uh, worrisome is that it puts more onus on uh, on the the defendant. Uh, to explain that his activities are not causing uh, harm, are, are not making our communities, our neighborhoods unsafe. And so into this law, uh, when you look at what can be reported, um, it could talk about, you know, uh, distribution of illicit drugs, but it also talks about production of illicit drugs. And, and there's no nuance between, you know, producing crystal meth on one side and having a fifth marijuana plant in your house on the other side. So um, in Canada, we uh, are allowed to have four cannabis plants in our house. Uh, if you had a fifth one, uh, you uh, could be subject to, uh, to the SCAN Act and, and then have to prove um, that, that you're not putting, you know, your, your neighborhood or community in, in danger. So the onus is on you and not uh, the justice system. Right, because as I understand it, one of the amendments that you're referring to that puts the onus on the individual to prove they're not threatening the neighborhood or creating um, hardship within the neighborhood is that now there's a presumption that um, uh, harm to the neighborhood is being caused rather than having to demonstrate that. Is that correct? Yes, that, that is correct. That is the way I understood it, the way it's written. And um, it's not exactly the way the minister uh, would presented it okay. and uh, looking at his answers, but um, it, it's clearly written like that. And, and that's why maybe uh, uh, me and, and uh, the minister had a, a, a coming out there with mm -hmm. uh, um, talking, uh, me asking for data and better explanations on on the uh, proposed amendments and him not uh, being able to give them to me. Yes, that's right. It was uh, a very lively and uh, and encouraging uh, debate. I was uh, I really appreciated your contributions. Uh, in, well, thank in the you room. very much. Yes. Yeah. Having it on in the background is very exciting. Um, so we're living, you know, as, as, and you've done work on this already, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but we're living through a serious rental crisis in this province. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, in your view, um, do you think that the the scan and especially the proposed amendments sort of could exacerbate this, the crisis that tenants are finding themselves in? Looking at the way the law is written and the way it could be interpreted, mm -hmm. um, there there could be uh, people being uh, evicted um, a lot easier mm -hmm. um, by being reported, and so it definitely uh, could have a negative impact on on an already uh, immense problem of housing, um, and and the problem of housing is uh, uh, when I see it, like I, I represent a very rural riding, it's mm -hmm. it's not. It's not a city problem uh, in New Brunswick. It's really all across the board. We have this this major uh, major problem, and and where people are are being rent evicted and and evicted for for other reasons. And government uh, is continuing to pass laws that help uh, landlords and does not help uh, renters. You raised in in committee uh, the very important issue of mental health and addiction and the, the need for more investment in mental health and addiction services in this province. Um, are you worried that the SCAN Act and the proposed amendments will result in, you know, undue hardships for people experiencing mental health and addiction issues? Absolutely. I mean, and it goes back to your last comment. Um mental health and 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 addictions addictions is is you know also a a, a medical problem and, and should be treated as such and so these kind of amendments and reinforcing a law that that makes us think about reagan's war on drugs mm -hmm. um is is you know a thing of the past and should be thing of the past but is thing of the present in new brunswick i guess but when when you look at it you know we need a more holistic approach and and as i told the minister i mean i don't think anyone's against safer communities no one's against uh, and no one's against that but it's it's how do we get there and, and how do we help the people um through different methods and alternative methods than just uh punishment 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 and um and this and especially in the the way that they're they're bringing these amendments is is uh, making that a lot easier for uh, for justice and police forces um, to uh, to 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 take action without any uh, actual uh, criminal uh, investigation or, or whatsoever, and so. These, these investments need to be part of the strategy and are not part of the strategy. We're not seeing these kind of investments. Um, this is unilateral, um, you know, Ted, Ted's war on drugs. Um, and so uh, it, it's, I mean, it, it, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to create problems for uh, vulnerable people, for people living in precarious situations and, and also uh, racialized uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think you're um, you're flagging uh, the ideology that comes out of something like Reagan's war on drugs is really apt. I think that's yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for that analysis. I think that's really helpful <laughs> for everybody and, and for viewers to understand sort of the, the core of what's happening here. So I will With let pleasure. you go. Thank you so much for coming in for your time and, you know, for all the work you're doing for your constituents in Kent North, but but really for all New Brunswickers. Thank you very much. With pleasure. Uh, anytime. Take care. Joining us next is Heil Duarte. Heil is the tenant advocate for the New Brunswick Coalition for Tenants' Rights, as well as a practicing lawyer in Fredericton. Nice to have you, Heil. Nice to see you. Hi, Dobin. Thank you. So how is the SCAN Act in keeping with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms? Well, that is a big, big problem, uh, I see, because um, there is already a regulation about illegal activities, which is called the criminal code. Mm -hmm. And there are criminal procedures to respect the rights and freedoms of people who are accused of criminal activity. Because mm -hmm. one thing, and we know from the news, nobody is guilty until proven. Right. <laughs> Everyone innocent and in the news and in the American movies, we always say you are innocent until, and please be quiet or all these things we saw. Mm -hmm. That applies to Canada too, yay. <laughs> so if, if you are accused of an illegal activity, you have the right to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. You have the right to have a lawyer, even for example, uh, legal aid in New Brunswick and in general in Canada. But in New Brunswick in particular, we have legal aid lawyers for family law and criminal law. Mm -hmm. And 
if a, if a person is it's at court or even in a detention facility of arrested, detained, and even if they have the money to pay a lawyer, but at that moment you are detained, you can call legal aid and I want to talk to a lawyer because mm -hmm. that is a really important right. And it's, it's in the tradition of the rule of law. It's in the tradition of the state. Mm -hmm. Nobody can be found guilty without the opportunity to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this scan act is really worrisome about that because it's, 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 it's allowing a person who is the director to decide and to make decisions about if, uh, if this person is, is, is engaging in an illegal activity. So, <laughs> you know? so it's, let, it's, me, it's, let me try to understand that then. Let's pretend that I'm someone's neighbor. And I believe, for whatever reason, that they're engaged in criminal activity that's outlined in the act, right? Out outlined in the SCAN Act. So there's like all the different things the SCAN Act covers. And I call the SCAN unit. I make a complaint. The director then decides whether or not to pursue an investigation. Yeah. And then what happens? And then they they if they pursue the investigation, they 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 can decide. So the the director do an affidavit and go to court because at the, yeah, it's a judge who decides. Okay. But at this moment, they have to do an affidavit. Mm -hmm. As I wanted to point out that there is a bill, there is a, there is a bill at this moment to amend this this can act. Mm -hmm. And in the bill, which is also worrisome, <laughs> is um, the director is not obligated to see the, the to explain the reasons to believe of the information. So, so someone called, yeah, someone called and say, I think in that house they are producing illegal drugs. Okay. Okay. So they start their investigation. And the director decides yes. So they, the director do an affidavit, which is a proof it's an evidence. I'm not discussing that. <laughs> um, the affidavit is a strong evidence. It's an affidavit. It's something important, um, but it's not obligated to say the reasons with the bill. It's mm -hmm. not obligated to see the reasons to believe the information. So they bring the affidavit to the judge. Okay. This is an information that the respondent, so the person who is accused, can say, oh, no, that is not true. I have the evidence that is not true. But if they don't say the reasons to believe, first, how they are going to say that? If you don't know, it's, it's like, I don't know, I, I, I feel like so inquisitorial. <laughs> you, you are with this, with the, and also this, this amendment, with this amendment is like, you are accused of something and you don't know the evidence and exactly what, what is happening here. And you can defend yourself, but you don't know from what. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and so the onus, the additional onus that's placed on the person who's been accused of illegal activity right, um, to demonstrate that they're not guilty is it's going to be a lot harder for them to demonstrate this potentially with the amendment yes, because they don't have all the information. So exactly. they're only working with what, with partial information about why they've been pulled into these proceedings. Yes. Wow. Yes. And it, it, yeah. It is, it's really, it's really, as I said, uh, I, I, and the, another layer for that is this is not criminal. So this is not part of a, the criminal code. So that means there is no legal aid for this. Right. So the person has either to hire a lawyer to defend this in front of a judge um, or, or defend himself. And, 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 not, and, and there is a reason that for criminal law, the criminal law system exists. Mm -hmm. First, to warranty the right to defense, 
-hmm. And there is a reason also why the system have legal aid lawyers for criminal law. Because mm -hmm. it's really important when you are accused of an illegal activity, it's also technical. And it's normal that a person who is not a lawyer, and even if he is not a lawyer specialized in criminal law, because mm -hmm. that is a, normally we lawyers, we specialize in a practice and normally criminal lawyers who work criminal law, they just work criminal law mm -hmm. because it's so big mm -hmm. and it's so important. You are, you are, you are a lawyer who works in criminal law has like, the freedom of the life of a person in their hands. It's like the doctors. It's really, really important. Mm -hmm. So, and then, and all these systems for warranties of freedom and liberty for freedom, and the, for the people, it's taken out of the window with the scan act. When the director does an investigation, what does that actually look like? Well, um, in the Article 9 of the, of the SCAN Act, it says that the director may, so they can, the director can collect information from any person of public body about the owner or occupant of the property, respect the name, address, whereabouts of the person, name, address of the employer, collect information about who, about the, the, the what is happening, the ownership of the property, the anything, actually, <laughs> the what about, what about this, anything, wow. anything. That's what is a the, lot of information to go out and collect because you got a, like a complaint from a neighbor. Yep. And also the act is um, talking about the privacy act. And uh, so this is can act is, is prevalent also about privacy concerns. No. So nobody can say, oh, no, I have privacy rights. No, with the scan, you don't have privacy rights. Does privacy it say rights. that in the act? That it, the, yeah. wow, wow. So, so yeah. your private, your privacy rights, right? Or like whatever is, like the, your privacy that's protected um, in other legislation does not apply if you are under scan investigation. Exactly. Okay. So really, the moment that a complaint is made, your, your protect, protections, although very narrow, as a tenant, and whatever privacy protections that you have are kind of gone. Yes. Yes, you are in the hands of the director or whoever the director delegates. To do the investigation. Yes. Wow. Okay. So you're going in totally unprotected, no legal aid. And if you don't have the, 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 the money to hire a lawyer to defend you, so you are going to, the person is going to end in court uh, by themselves, representing themselves. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and expertise today. Yeah, thank really, you. really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and, uh, and look forward to, to talking to you again about this soon. Okay. Thank you for inviting me. Bye. And that's our show. Thanks so much for joining us. The NB Debrief is a partnership between CHCO TV and the NB Media Club. See you next time. Go